So let's talk about black exploitation. <laughs> So black exploitation is basically a movie genre that started in the 70s and it's when movies exploit black people or black culture for profit, popularity, to gain a following, etc, etc. We see the original first wave of black exploitation in the 70s. In the 90s we kind of see the second wave and we see a lot of movies coming out that are similar but different. What we're seeing now is what I would say the third wave of black exploitation or at least the new wave of black exploitation movies first i just want to talk about the history of the genre hollywood was on this downward slope they weren't making as much money and then melvin van peebles i don't know how to say his name i'm sorry but the dude who wrote directed and starred in sweet sweetbacks badass songs he basically had this idea for a screenplay and then he did it all himself super low budget and it ended up being so so popular not only black people were like going to the theaters to see this movie but like everyone because of this movie other black directors and black writers and black actors came into the scene at this point because they started making more movies that had similar premises that starred black people that were like actiony and like badass basically black people were starring in movies for the first time ever in history like this never happened before besides like the mammy character like y'all know what i mean like this is the first time black people are starting in movies and we look fucking badass. We don't only see like black people making these movies, but also like white producers and directors and production companies investing into black stories and sometimes even writing it themselves and then hiring black people to act in it. And it just became this huge genre that just blew up all throughout the 70s. And because this genre blew up, the NAACP was like, okay, Yes, like we're happy that black people are starring in these movies, but the way that they're portraying black people, the way that most people in America are seeing black people portrayed on screen for the first time ever, this is how they're seeing us, and they're not seeing us in the best light. The term was coined by the Hollywood NAACP chapter leader, Junius Griffin, to draw attention to what some saw as the corrupting nature of the emerging genre. However, not everyone in the black community agreed with this assessment. Despite the genre's potential to reinforce negative stereotypes, a large majority of the black community considered black exploitation cinema to be a sign of progress. And unfortunately, the genre was kind of short lived. It was kind of only really like popping in the 70s. The thing is, like, <laughs> the thing is, like, I think. I don't understand what's up with the production companies, but they think they can make the same movie over and over and over again. And this is a theme that has not gone away. It has not, it just not happens. But they think they can make the same movies over and over again, and that people aren't gonna get tired of it. And so that's what happened throughout the 70s. They basically made the same movie over and over again with the same characters, with the same plot, with the same everything. And then people got tired of them and they stopped making money. And then in the 90s, we see a new wave of black exploitation with Do the Right Thing, Boys in the Hood, Juice, movies like that. We see this new wave of black exploitation, which is similar to the first wave in that it stars black people, directed by black people, usually not all the time, Quentin Tarantino. So basically, the criticisms from the first wave of black exploitation were really like taken into account they still had like stereotypes but they did it a little bit better and like there's a clear difference between the movies from the 70s and the movies from the 90s like you can kind of see that societal shift in thinking and then there's this new wave so obviously there's been like a huge shift in society and race dynamics a lot has changed from the 90s till now it's like now popularized to be quote-unquote woke and care about issues especially like race issues the thing is i think people care more about seeming like they care i think a lot of production companies like just companies in general but like production companies are seeing that and so they're investing in movies like black movies but like it's so confusing to me because it seems like they only invest in like super big budget black movies and like that's great and all but they don't prioritize like 
who's writing these movies like a lot of the time white people are writing these movies they don't really care about showing diverse black stories it seems like they care about black stories that they can um market to anyone and not just black people like and most of the time these movies like aren't made specifically with black people in mind like they're made and written to be consumed by anyone and that's fine and everything I think there's a clear difference between movies that are like good that center blackness and black people and then movies that I would consider a part of black exploitation and that just exploit black people and like this popular genre now and everyone like wants to watch these movies because they want to feel like they're inclusive and white people especially they go and watch these movies and they feel so good about themselves after and they don't even do the work to check themselves on their internalized racism or just even like donate or do anything. They don't do anything for the rest of the fucking week. They don't do anything for the rest of the month. They're like, I watched The Hate You Give. Like, I feel good about myself now and that's it. And then they think that did something for them. They think they learned something from that movie. And you can learn things from movies, but the things that you learn from movies is supposed to inspire you to then learn the actual issues that exist in society and the framework that we're working with in society that privileges certain races over other races and movies are just supposed to like kind of push you towards there you're not actually learning anything from watching movies you're you're not so let's talk about some of these movies that i would consider the new wave of black exploitation movies hey as editing this video, I realized that I missed a few things that I wanted to say. For starters, some of the things that I will be saying about these movies will include spoilers, so make your decision now, I guess. So I'm about to critique a handful of movies, and some of these movies are bad in my opinion, but some of these movies are just like average okay. I wanted to say specifically to black people, if you enjoyed these movies, that's perfectly fine that's perfectly okay movies are for entertainment and even i was entertained by some of these movies to a certain extent i just critique every movie that i watch and specifically movies that are starring black protagonists you bet i'm gonna critique those movies to the fucking bone because you know what the truth is we haven't had a good rep in this industry we haven't had a good history in this industry and so every movie that represents black people in any way i'm going to critique it as hard as i can because we deserve better and it's long overdue and as a black film major and filmmaker that is what i that's what i do so here are my critiques let's start with the hate you give it's a movie but it was a book first by angie thomas and i read the book before i even knew they were making a movie about it and i loved the book because it's actually written for young black people and young black women i really related to the book i really related to the character i think in this movie specifically the director did a really bad job in portraying star and all the complexities that was written in the book it was clearly made for white audiences and to be digested by white people when the book itself was anything but that i was really surprised and like upset at the fact that last june this movie was like number one in canada i swear to god on like cineplex like everyone was watching this movie for some reason in june of last year it came out like in 2018 like it just makes me feel like people are literally like romanticizing like all the shit that happened last june when for some people it was a truly terrifying time to be alive <laughs> waves waves is written and directed by a white man okay oh it makes me so upset because i was in that theater like i watched it in theaters and that movie made me cry y'all and then i left the theater and i found out that it was written and directed by a white man you got fucking played look at yourself and it just made me so angry because there's so many things in that movie. Okay, so basically the movie is about this suburban black family, right? Young teenage man. He has aggression issues because of all the pressure he's getting from school and because he's hurt and he can't wrestle anymore. His girlfriend is pregnant. All of this is boiling up. And then he hits and kills his pregnant girlfriend. And then he goes to jail. 
And then that's it. That's done with his story. There's no character development. We don't see a resolution. That's it. He's in jail. And then that's it for his story. And then it shifts to the little sister. And then the rest of the movie is like, she's dealing with the trauma that she just lived through. And then she meets a boy and she falls in love with or whatever. And then the rest of the movie is her helping her boyfriend go through his trauma. So what is this movie doing? I'm sorry. And it's just like, it has all these pretty colors and it has a good soundtrack. Visuals are, but it's such a poorly written movie. The white man who wrote and directed this movie, he wrote it and he said the movie was mainly autobiographical. Schultz gave his black cast members the responsibility of providing feedback and although any actor is able to bring their own creativity to how they portray the characters, it's not their responsibility to rewrite the script. Sterling Brown, the actor who played the father, had his own fears about the film saying that with a young black man taking a young woman's life, the idea of black masculinity is already something fearful in this country and I wasn't sure if it was furthering a stereotype or getting inside a young man's life. So if this isn't black exploitation, I don't know what is because he literally exploited black people so that he could get his own fucking story made and he just made like literally black, black, what's it called? He literally black faced a movie. And then let's talk about Queen and Slim. Like, Queen and Slim is bad. And, like, the thing is, <laughs> Queen and Slim was actually, like, made for black people, says Lena Way, who wrote it. The visuals of Queen and Slim, mwah, beautiful, amazing. I think the director did a really good job. But the story itself doesn't make any fucking sense. What happened in Queen and Slim would never happen in real life. A lawyer would not choose to... Did she kill the police officer i think she did no he did i think they kill a police officer but the lawyer the girl is the one who made the decision to run away and then while they're running basically across the fucking country state through state no black women help them like they get help along the way but never was it from a black woman that just doesn't make any sense and then they fall in love with each other. I, I can't even say they fall in love with each other, but they develop like this romantic attraction towards each other purely based off the proximity that they are to each other and that they're running away like to save their lives. And then they both die at the end. So it's like in this scenario that would never happen in real life, not even in this fake scenario, can black people stay alive? Can black people be free? That black people can like have their happy ending? Not even the scenario. Like, I don't understand. And they die at the very end too. Like they were so close to going free and then they die. Like, I just don't, I just, I don't get it. <laughs> Okay, and then let's talk about black people in horror movies. Um, it's a little issue because basically black people were never really in horror movies like that up until, or at least I don't know if you'd consider Birth of a Nation a horror movie. And then the Night of the Living Dead, which was good. And then literally after Night of the Living Dead, nothing until Get Out. And the thing about Get Out that made it a good movie is that like we've never seen anything like that before. So after Get Out, basically they caught on, they as in the production companies, basically they caught on to the fact that black horror was a thing that people wanted. And then they fucking made movies like Antebellum. Okay, I'm sorry, that slavery porn movie, I did not watch it because I would not put myself through that. And I don't know any black person that would willingly put themselves through that, first of all. Um, I don't know who that movie was made for. It was not made for black people. <laughs> not base 
black horror movies in reality can we not do that can we not base black horror movies in reality these are two different movies y'all these are two different movies two different movies may i add that were made a year apart from each other like there are so many movies that are made that have been made about black pain and black trauma why do we need more why is this still something that needs to be explored there are so many different black experiences there's a whole diaspora of black people and there's just so much materials for movies that could be made that i don't understand why they keep making the same movies over and over again all these like black pain movies that are being made like they're really painful to watch to hear about to like even just like all this energy it's really relieving to get it out but like it's not like i don't want to have to um Basically, the point I'm trying to make is that it's now popular to be inclusive and people want to go to the movie theaters and feel like they learned something and feel good about themselves. And so these production companies are investing in these stories. I just kind of want movies like made for like us. Like I kind of want movies that like white people like wouldn't understand. They can try, but like I want movies that like decenters whiteness. It's really hard to come by like movies that center blackness and that center black people that aren't sad. This is just my opinion on these movies and this is what I think about this new genre that we're seeing of black exploitation movies. And so let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree with anything that I said. I'd love to have like a conversation. And honestly, like, I just want to see like better movies being made, period. Hopefully one day I can do that for you. Okay, um, that's it for this movie. This that, That's it for this movie. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed me yelling at the camera. I have no idea how I'm going to edit this, but hopefully I get in all the juicy, good information that I'm trying to convey. And I hope you have a good day.